<laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, because I interview people as well, and there is this one guy where he's like a, you know, a, a legendary metal musician, and I, you know, it was it, the, it, it was me and another guy in, uh, interviewing him, and I, this, you know, I had done like, you know, five interviews in the past month, all, all the same style that I'm doing this interview with, yeah. and they, they were all like such fucking fun times. It was like the, the, the people I was email corresponding with afterwards were pal, like it just these great times. And so I'm like riding this high. I'm like, yeah, man, crushing these interviews, right? Yeah, I come such in a good like interviewer. two pages of like these fun silly questions that are like jokes but it's like jokes because I know this person's music really well and I yeah. know some things about them, you know what I mean I wrote jo like joking around with the person I like fire like two of these jokes out and he is like he is like not a titter out of this guy he no. is like not amused and I'm no. just like oh god oh. Two pages, God, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna say for the rest of this interview. Welcome back, everybody, to episode number 23 of the Johnny Rogers Show. My guest today, I'm so happy to have him on. He's a host on Banger Films. He's a Twitch Partners streamer. He does a lot of cool um, Twitch runs of Metal Monthly Research Stream, and I've been seeing you popping up those all the time. But please join me in welcoming comedian Blaine Smith. Hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> Good, man. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. We were just talking before we started that you just survived COVID. Congratulations. Just survived COVID. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the thing that you getting COVID sucks, but what everybody, oh, well, comedians, every comedian's reaction is like, oh, damn, you got COVID. Well, you can go to the U.S. without a test for the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You just need the proof that you had COVID. You can go to the U.S. Uh, less hassle. So, you know, silver linings. <laughs> like, no, I got the antibodies. Yeah. I'm in the clear. Uh, our word for the podcast uh, that you picked was uh, metal. Yeah. Uh, we want to elaborate on that for the, uh, the folks at home. I, I don't know if anybody knows what uh, Banger Films is or, or what you do, but uh, do you want to kind of tell people who we are and what you do? Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a comedian, but I'm also a metalhead. Metal is my favorite uh, music. It's most of what I listen to. And uh, it's been like a really interesting uh, uh, journey I've had because of it. It's always a, a fun thing to talk about because it's like, it's super weird the way I just was listening to metal and doing comedy and kind of magically my life kind of pushed those two things together and allowed me to overlap those two things. And I never, it was uh, when I started doing comedy, I like was like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, wear my vest on stage and, and band t-shirts and look really crazy and blah, blah, blah. And then as I was doing comedy more, I was like, Oh, you know, it's like, not going well with that you know people are a little shocked by it and it's not as relatable so if i scale it back i'm still a metal guy but you yeah. know it might be a little more relatable for audiences and so i went through this like extreme i'm i'm gonna go full metal on stage and then i was like just you know button up shirt you know you can see my tattoos a little bit and then doing that for a little while and then now i'm like, like corporate you know, metal like, <laughs> yeah and then now i'm back full into like Meg, well just uh, metals metals where i'm at i can i can let the metal flag fly no problem and uh it's been an interesting little yeah. those like those little dips into um you know like freedom projects i like to call them is <laughs> just it's so yeah. just, like every artist should take advantage of any crossover moment like that like not don't be scared if, if it's your if it's something you're really interested in just because it might not be the thing that you're pursuing doesn't mean that you should just like abandon that opportunity yeah yeah, because in, in turn you're building an audience, even with like what you're doing there, right? Right. Yeah. It's 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 one of those things where you don't you don't really think about it. Where you know you it, you start something and you know something like comedy or art or wh whatever you're doing, and uh, and you're kind of like going at it. And there are people that can you know just be comics. They are just comedian capital C. They're not <laughs> drawing on any like 
uh, like real basis. They're just, you know, you know, anyone from like Jerry Seinfeld to like Norm Macdonald, who are just kind of like making observations about the world and pe people from all walks of life and enjoy it. But like, just cause you're not, you don't have to do that. You can like yeah. cross over <laughs> your shit with other shit to kind of like, look, my best friend is Nigel Grinstead. Who's like one of the best comics in Canada. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, he's a pure comedian and, uh, <laughs> you know, being friends with him, you're like, damn, I'm not as good as that guy. I need to, <laughs> I need to cover that hole with a little something. And so by, you know, mixing in your passions, co combining two things, you get to kind of create a unique product when maybe just going full whole hog with one passion, you weren't like quite able to create that unique product. Yeah, yeah, and like I was saying, the the two can like you feed each other even too. Yeah. Like I bet just because you're talking more passionately about like different subjects and not necessarily worrying about being funny every minute, it kind yeah. of frees you up a little bit too. So the next time that you hit a stage to do comedy, it might even be like smoother or better than you remember. Yeah. You're like, you're like, oh, this this provided me like a breath of fresh air, I guess. In like yeah, the same I mean... same form of presenting. Yeah, I, I like I talk for like four to f like sometimes like five hours straight on Twitch, right? I sit it's there and wild. I talk. <laughs> I know I sit there and I talk. And it when you start, you, you watch someone do it and you go like, okay, yeah, I'll start doing that. And then you start doing it and you're like, I can't talk for five hours. And, you know, you, you start and you're like, fumbling and you don't always have and then you get better at it and you do find that like just the ability to talk and fill it with something entertaining is again a skill that it really helps stand up but you know you don't get to you know talk for five hours on stage <laughs> ever right to an audience right it's yeah, like that's yeah. the other thing you know what i you know when you start as well you, you there's not that many people here but uh when i'm doing these mental monthly streams i'm yeah i'm streaming for like four or five hours and i'm talking to like 150 people that yeah. are what made you want to start that the metal monthly streams it was, uh, this is now a thing I'm really pushing is like overlap, overlap your passions and like mm -hmm. try and commodify like the stuff you have to do. So I, I make a video for Banger TV called Metal Monthly where I find like my five favorite underground metal albums coming out like next month. So I'm, uh, this, oh, okay. you know, so I'm, I'm filming, you know, uh, an episode that'll air the first uh, Tuesday of February and that'll be five metal albums that are coming out in February that I think people should buy. But the way I find these is there's a website that is like Wikipedia for metal and you can just look at every album. It's like user generated. You can just look at every album coming out like next month. Wow, and so I, love it. I, I used to on my own, just open these all open up all these bands and look at them and listen to them, a bit of them. And then this is just a thing I had to do and it was work. And it was always something I was kind of like, uh, you know, it was fun, but it's also like a lot of work. Uh, it takes yeah. like hours. It's a pain in the ass. And there's a lot of really bad metal that you have to listen to. <sighs> and so one day I was just like, ah, you know, I'll stream it one time. And I streamed it this one time and I was like, oh, you know, I'll do, I'll, I'll do the whole, I'll try and do the whole research thing. And I got through most of the month and it went really well. And I was like, okay, once a month, I'll do this special stream. And I started doing it once a month. And then again, it's that thing where you don't know, you don't necessarily know what your product was. Before I was playing metal, or I was listening to metal and playing video games on Twitch. And there's still an audience there for that. And I still do that. But I started doing this and suddenly it's like fucking gangbusters now. Hey. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm making a bunch of money. I'm getting like great numbers. And yeah. I'm like, oh shit. And so at first I was like, I'll do this once a month. Now it's like I do it every weekend. Every weekend I'm I because now I'm talking so much and we're making fun of so many bands and going in so hard on them that ah. I can only do a week at a time. I because there's like 200 bands every month on average. Oh so I can get through like 50 on a stream. Um but yeah, it's like fifth. It's like forty of them. I'm just roasting. I'm just roasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would love to see. Is you do like a top ten of like the absolute worst of the month or something. <laughs> yeah. Like just get somebody to clip together like the, the top ten worst moments where you hear it for the first time. You know what I mean? Like it's it's you reacting to your content yeah. almost, like going yeah. back through it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's been, a, it's, 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 got, it's morphed into this weird thing where now like 
if a band sometimes bands come to the stream to watch because they're like they know about the stream and they know they have an album coming out and they know yeah. I'm gonna get to their album. I did a podcast. Yeah, I'm I did a sweating. podcast. I did a podcast last week, and at the end of the podcast, uh, the girl on the podcast was like, "By the way, you talked about my band on your stream," and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> what did I say?" It was a good thing. <laughs> it was perfect because it was like I made fun of them, but also complimented them so it was oh, okay. that perfect sweet spot yeah 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 yeah. you got to make sure that you kind of balance it out a little bit at least so it's not just all critiques yeah yeah there is there one time i'm doing it and someone in my chat is like dude you work with one of the guys in this band and i was like oh no dylan's in this band fuck <sighs> oh god there's nothing funny in them getting like burning someone <laughs> like that <laughs> Accidental and burn. Accidentally, oh shit. Friendly fire, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is going to make work real awkward. <laughs> yeah. What, um, I was going to say, like, what were some of your earliest, like, turn, like, made you a metalhead? Like, if somebody was wanting to, uh, I'll break this up into two questions. What was yep. your first early influence? And if somebody's looking to get into metal music, what are like the albums to ease them into the genre? Yeah, uh, when I was a kid, I mean, uh, I got into it the way a lot of it's like the timeless way of getting into it, like Judas Priest, Metallica, you know, there's one of the things that I think is really interesting about metal is that uh, our, a lot of times our big bands are still like cool and we still like them <laughs> like everybody love loves Iron Maiden still. yeah uh, you know there's there's uh, a lot of genres where like the top of the heap is kind of shit and there is a lot of big shitty metal bands mm. but really the the like a lot of the bands that got us into it are like just universally loved you know like Iron Maiden Judas Priest yeah you know Metallica a little bit went off the deep end there but there's a whole bunch of bands like that and yeah just heavy metal is such a great way to get into metal because you know it, it pretty much everybody you can put on like an Iron Maiden song or a Judas Priest song in a bar or like some Metallica songs uh and you know it, it could be a bar of totally totally mixed group of people some people have, you know don't give a fuck about metal some people love metal and everybody's gonna get pumped because it's you know it's just good party music there's a lot of metal that's like good party music and then there's a lot of metal that's fucking this shit behind me yeah, yeah. I'm like that looks like they, they each individually look like a cult yeah <laughs> <laughs> like a flag for a different cult <laughs> yeah i'm not I, it's like i i kind of you know i i'm definitely one, not one of those people it's like metals everybody should love me it's like you gotta ease yourself into this you if you fucking this just... german new metal band like there's some people that are super specific yeah. with it yeah i'm super specific with it but i'm never gonna tell anyone like no yeah. your entry point should be like abrasive black metal just <laughs> <laughs> just recorded like shit in somebody's basement my guys yeah. don't know what they're doing <laughs> in norway in 1992 that's the shit and then they all killed each minutes. other right after yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never made any more music after this album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I can understand the like initial, like a lot of people when they hear metal, they they think like screaming immediately. Yeah. But for me, when I was thinking about it, I think just like instruments. Like yeah. the cool thing about metal is it's one of the last surviving kind of like rock type where there's actual like instruments involved. Like there's yeah. multiple, there's like huge drum setups and like totally i mean and there's like there are there's there's bands that are successful that have like medieval that are like keeping medieval instruments alive you know what i mean oh like the, the bands like the international touring bands that make a fantastic living and one of the people making a fantastic living is like the fucking uh hurdy gurdy player the loop oh, player in the band <laughs> Is it just a dude on a harp? Yeah, I was just, I, I mean, I just, I was just watching a video and it's like a, a, a video with a budget and they're like going all the people in the bed. You're like, well, that guy's playing a lute. That guy's playing a mandolin. <laughs> Have you ever got to meet any of your, like your favorites? Yeah, I mean, it. that's, uh, that's again, another weird, I mean, it's kind of similar with metal and uh, there's a lot of really big parallels with metal and comedy, which is like, 
if you like really like uh, a, a comedian or a musician, unless you're like, I like Jerry Seinfeld and Metallica, you yeah. can probably meet your favorite comedian and you could probably meet your favorite metal band. And as long as you're not like weird, there's a chance you could actually become friends with these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, like when they pop Keep in the town, the don't be weird. Up. <laughs> yeah, don't be weird, but you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 there's, there's, there's such a, like a, a lack of, of barrier to entry for a lot of this, because the instant you take a step below the, the, the top level, everybody's like kind of happy to have fans and engage with them. And, and the reason they do this is because they just really love it. And when they meet someone with a similar passion, they, they like that. Yeah, and yeah. I find that's, that's like, you know, with a lot of other, even, you know, with, with so many other things it's you know you're even uh, you know you 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 love a movie director and it's not a famous movie director it's it's they're like inaccessible they can't you know you've got to like go to see them at an expensive film festival and yeah, there's like a yeah. panel and maybe you, you can, can send them an instagram dm now <laughs> you know there's a there's a chance that if you just go to comedy bar when your favorite comedian is in town you can buy them a beer <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a little right? insane yeah that level of access Right. And I mean, that's, uh, you know, I have a, I have a bit more of a level of access because now I'm like, people want me to talk about their uh -huh. music. It like helps them if I talk about their music, but yeah, you know, especially if I say nice things about a band, it's just like, boom, instantly I'm, they're friends. They're just immediately friends. Uh, you know, Did you I, mean I anybody just... that was a dick because you said something not nice about their band? <laughs> You're like, why is that guy being so mean to me? That, 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 that's happened too. But the, the, the greatest thing was there's, the, <laughs> there's this band Incantation and I love the band, but they released a record that I didn't super love and I reviewed it and I uh, reviewed it honestly and was like yeah and then i met the like the front man of the band because we were i was i was i was doing comedy and he was playing at a metal festival uh and and, and he was like he was like he just wanted to talk to me about the review and we talked a bit <laughs> and he's like hey, can we take a funny picture so we took a picture and he's flipping me off oh, in no. this picture and i'm like oh no <laughs> Well, at least he has a sense of humor about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that is a, again. There's only two yeah. types of people in metal. There's either people with like that are you know the exact same as comedians, like just just goofy. The instant they're off stage, all they want to do is like joke around, and then people ones that are way too serious that you don't want to fuck talk to. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I I, I just can't stand that quality in a person who just takes yeah. everything so fucking seriously yeah again maybe we need those people in the world but i just can't be around those that level of like yeah. self-authority <laughs> like, yeah. you... <laughs> it just doesn't work <laughs> hey dad what are you being so stern for <laughs> it doesn't make any sense yeah, I, I, I mean, because I interview people as well. And there was this one guy where he's like, a, you know, a, a legendary metal musician. And I, you know, it was it, the, it was me and another guy in, uh, interviewing him. And I this, you know, I had done like, you know, five interviews in the past month, all, all the same style that I'm doing this interview with. Yeah. And they, they were all like such fucking fun times. It was like the, the, the people I was email corresponding with afterwards were pal, like it just these great times. And so I'm like riding this high. I'm like, yeah, man, crushing these interviews, right? Yeah, like I come such in a good like interviewer. two pages of like these fun silly questions that are like jokes but it's like jokes because i know this person's music really well and i yeah. know some things about them, you know what i mean i wrote like joking around with the person i like fire like two of these jokes out and he is like he is like not a titter out of this guy he no. is like not amused and i'm no. just like oh god ah. Two pages, God, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to say for the rest of this interview. And it was just me and my my co-host flop sweating for, I think, 45 oh minutes, just dying through an interview, just, just dying, just being like, kill me. I remember like the first one of the first podcasts I did, and I was just like, in, I can't remember. Mom, well, I wouldn't say even if it was, but I remember interviewing <laughs> someone and it was just like, 
I was used to interviewing people that I already was like friends with or had some what of a connection. So yeah. I was like hoping that there was the same kind of camaraderie. And I don't know why I got lost in that just amateur thinking, right? Thinking yeah. that everyone will be just like that. But they came like thinking this is an interview. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, man, we're just hanging and we're just chatting like over this podcast. So I'd say something and then they'd answer and then they'd just pause and just wait. <laughs> for the next <laughs> thing and i'm like i don't got questions oh. dude like we're just hanging did you, out did you accidentally you accidentally uh invite a boomer and didn't tell them what a podcast was yeah. they were, just, <laughs> they were used to doing like over. this is for the newspaper right yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna quote me you better write that down <laughs> it's like it's all yeah. good man it's recorded yeah it's weird when people don't kind of understand that you know the difference between a podcast and an interview or with a podcast like with an interview, yeah, you're going to ask questions. I'm going to respond to them. Cool. Move on yeah. with a, with a, with a podcast. Like you can tell a story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you can tell me a story. <laughs> it's a two way street. You're the I, guess, mean, but I could just go on a 20 minute story right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's a two-way street, man. Like, admittedly, your side of the street has parking on it. So yeah, if, sure. like, my truck's wide, you got to kind of pull over to the side. But, yeah, it's a two-way street. <laughs> That's such a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you know, if you butt in, it's like, all right, you're the guest. I guess I'll let you talk for a little bit. Yeah. Of course, yeah. I'm going to keep asking you questions, too, because I'm just a curious <laughs> person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, the that kind of like the different it's podcasts are podcasts are fun to do. Interviews are like not as fun because <laughs> a lot of times with an interview, you're like, you know, you're you're getting I just, I just don't want that level of like stress around a conversation, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. They're strange well, to listen to. Yeah. Well, because a lot of the times you get like doing podcasts and doing interviews is when you do a bunch of them, you get a lot of the same questions. And with mm. interviews, you find you immediately if you get the same question, you can like hammer out the 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 exact same like response to the interview question that you gave in that last interview. Yeah. And, you know, you're not you're not happy. It's, it's just boring. You know, you're like, like what, what made you want to become a comedian? Yeah. Yeah. But like like with, a, with a with a podcast, I mean, I I get asked the same questions a lot, and I deliver the same, you know, the same rough kind of answer. But I, you know, you can, I know a bit about you. I can we're having a t conversation, so I can deliver it differently, and it's just more. It's, it's it, there's a reason people podcasts really took off like interviews have been happening for years and then podcasts happen and everybody started to be like hey let's just download podcasts and listen to another but some fucking jag off yeah, talk and, for two and, hours. and then the, the uh yeah exactly what exactly what i'm doing i'm like i'm just gonna yeah. start talking on the internet like it was just a decision i made <laughs> it wasn't hard like yeah. they've made they've made it so easy for you it's like you can order yeah. You can order a microphone and a webcam off of Amazon and then hook up a light and then stream it. <laughs> it's also given like everybody the I don't think a lot of people realize how far the reach you could have if you just have a podcast with like four episodes. It's you can insane. just start sending emails and you can get some like big names just I've like I've seen some people uh, I, like I know and and bands I know and then you see like them uh, you know YouTube the page will come up and they're on some that like you're like oh man this person wound up on some just random person's podcast where they were like okay yeah I got asked to do a podcast my my PR rep said there's a podcast coming through and they're doing it with someone who's got like eight views and it's like really janky and you're like yeah man yeah that's the way it is we need the promotion no other interviewer is taking us <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to build up my janky show here but the reason <laughs> i wanted to start is just because i've always just been that person who's uh, like asking a million questions whenever i'm around other people too and like uh i wanted to have you on the show too because i'm thinking back to like uh hanging at comedy bar and yeah. then just like i was like oh yeah blame is always so cool like you're I just see you as like the the class before me kind of a comedian and just there's so few people i think in that community that are like willing to to bring in the younger guys or willing to be like yeah you got something or like yeah yeah keep doing it you know what i mean like yeah 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 no i mean I, I always i always appreciated that level of support yeah it's a, you know i've always I've, I've hosted a lot of shows and i've and i've like been involved in some in various ways of running open mics just because it's always nice when you just to like 
you know, you, it's so weird that at like every level you get to, you always remember like when someone will level up, like just like gives you a pat on the shoulder anything. and you're like, that's literally it makes like a month <laughs> for you. You're like, ah, fuck yeah. Like, and that's that's just, keep going. And you know, it's, it's always, it's always been a thing where it's like, it's just, you know, it's, it, I'm, I'm very much as someone that, you know, I'm fucking like going fucking five hours trying to find five underground pants to promote. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I like, I like, you know, creating a sense of community and I like making sure that, you know, people, people are getting the, the, the light shined on them uh, as much as possible, spreading that around. And yeah, you know, it's yeah. always, it's just, you know, someone else feels good. You feel good. It's just like a real, a real net positive. Yeah, dude, that was the whole point of this podcast is to like shine that light back a little bit and just kind of yeah. touch in with people and see, see how you're doing, see like where your head's at too. Because especially I know this fucking, I, I know we can talk about the pandemic till yeah, yeah. the sun comes on. You literally just had COVID, but like the yeah. shit affects, has affected people greatly. Did, now you can be honest about this. Has it been a positive impact in your life or a neg more of a negative impact in your life? It's, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm very, very fortunate in a lot of ways. You know, I, I, I literally bought a house like a couple of months before the pandemic. <laughs> so, hey. so what, before this, uh, me and my, <laughs> me and my wife lived in like a 600 square foot townhome, and I, the pandemic would have been a different time. <sighs> For sure. Like I got a garage. I built a gym in it. Nice. <laughs> it's like, it's, you know what I mean? Like we got, we made, a, we built a little pool in the backyard. Like Hell I yeah, can't dude. complain about <laughs> shit. And then, you know, uh, not being able to do as much stand up uh, forced me to like, like uh, Twitch was always like a hobby for me, a ca kind of mm -hmm. casual hobby. It was just something I did because it was like, well, you know, I'm playing video games and listening to metal anyways. I'll make some jokes. And it was fun. You know, it, it was always a fun hobby, but, uh, this just forced me to be like, well, I can't do comedy. Like I can't, like I literally can't do comedy right now. Everybody's doing zoom shows. And I'm like, what the fuck is the difference between a zoom show and me just saying, fuck zoom show. So I'm just going to do my Twitch thing. And th that's what I did. And you know, uh, it worked out really well. It really, you know, if, uh, if I didn't own a house, it would be a, it would be, I could make a living off Twitch if I didn't own, if I didn't buy the house, uh, <laughs> I bought the house, so I need another job. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's, I need another Twitch channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, I always encourage people to like, you know, explore the platform, get on there. I had, I had a buddy that <laughs> plays guitar. Uh, one of my, one of my best friends, Daniel DK, fantastic guitar player, uh, works with me a banger. And for years I was like, get on Twitch, man. It's this, you know, I just stream a couple days a week as a hobby. I make like a couple of hundred bucks a month. Uh, you know, you should get on the platform. You'll make like a couple hundred bucks a month. And who doesn't need a couple of hundred bucks, extra bucks a month? Yeah. Uh, he got on at the start of the pandemic and he just plays guitar. He just fucking plays guitar. And sometimes he does these crazy streams where he plays guitar for like 12 hours straight. He, he, he puts Jesus. a lot of work into it. He's very talented. Um, but he like with it, he's now like in the top, like 2000 streamers on the whole platform. Uh, like uh, we make so many jokes because like it's now. For, yeah, for yeah. now, for me, it's also ridiculous that I said a couple hundred dollars, but for him, it's fucking super ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, but the Man, point that's why I'm even double downing on yourself. Like, just, yeah. if you have something, it's a viable option. Just take yeah. it. Yeah, well, the thing I, I, I tell to a lot, of, I've been really pushing, especially after all this, to a lot of comedians is like to realize that comedy is a skill that you've developed that you can like deploy other places. It doesn't just need your stand up doesn't just need to be stand up. I mean, the, the reason I'm successful in metal is because 90 percent of the people that are talking on screen uh, that are involved in metal are either musicians or journalists. Mm -hmm. And both of those people. There is no part of that job where it's a necessity that they're good at talking and can talk in an engaging and entertaining way. Yeah, yeah. Some of them can for sure. Storytellers. 
some of them can't <laughs> but as a comedian that if if you're calling yourself a comedian that is that is bare minimum to call yourself a comedian right so that's it was just an immediate click and so now my whole thing is anytime anyone like has a fucking tells me about something they're interested in i'm like have you tried combining it with comedy and putting it on the internet <laughs> <laughs> have you tried combining that with comedy and putting it on the internet like <laughs> what do you do sales pitch like, yeah, i'm it's just like, like you're I'm like sandwiches? Twitch's like brand ambassador at this point. I'm just like, yeah, man, Twitch, get on Twitch. <laughs> I've been saying that with like TikTok forever. I'm saying to every single person, I'm like, just take what you're already doing, clip it, throw it on TikTok. New audience. Yep. Like yep. it's it's totally. the least, it's the least amount of work possible. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's uh, you know, it's uh it's, it's a crazy. cool, fun thing. And with Twitch, it, you can immediately monetize it. And it's cool monetization. It's monetization you feel good about because it's not it's like you, you it's yours. Yeah. It's mine, you know, and it's people just it's you're a cam girl. People throw <laughs> yeah, money at you. A you cam people, girl. <laughs> people throw money at you as you perform. And you know what? It feels good throwing money at someone and it feels good having money thrown at you. Yeah, that's yeah. that's just all, my whole thing. It's all mutual. Yeah. I've turned into like an, all cam girls now. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, I've gone full like <laughs> inspirational speaker about this. I'm like, I'm just fucking running back and forth on the corner of the stage. You can make that th ten thousand dollars at home today. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same boat, dude. I've been doing the same thing for every single episode. That's always been my message was for more people to just get on the internet and create. Yeah. I think it's gonna get to a point where. Like right now we're seeing the, the comedians and entertainers who were like already kind of doing this stuff, but maybe like half ass because they were trying to do live shows. But yeah. at some point you're going to see like just regular people just starting a podcast and or starting yeah. a Twitch stream. Like somebody who just, I don't know, fucking works at a factory. They're just going to yeah. decide to start a fishing podcast where they just literally talk about fishing. Hey, man, that's uh, that's happening. That's there. Uh, there's there's a guy I'll put when I'm doing work. Sometimes I put this guy on on YouTube. The whole thing is he just he's like he owns a repair shop and he just buys like broken PS4. He goes like, hey, I bought 40 broken PS4s for $2,389. If I can fix 15 of them, that's a profit. Let's get into it. And then he's like, let's diagnose these PS4s. He's and like, that's well, just fucking it. He just opens up a PS4. Like, and well, goes, I fixed none of them and my wife left me. <laughs> <laughs> I now owe the loan sharks twenty eight thousand. <laughs> it's so it's it's the perfect like white noise where I just look over and I'm like, yeah, he's gonna test that lead. That lead's probably faulty, and he's like, it's a faulty lead. That's I just need to solder on a new fuse here. Solder on that fuse. This PlayStation Four is ready to go. That's one of fifteen. <laughs> Oh my god! There was a there was this one guy. A lock, I think his name is Locksmith Lawyer. A lock picking lawyer. Lock yes, picking lawyer. Very familiar. That, I love that one. Yeah, that that is another. This is the lock one. picking lawyer. <laughs> show people here. Yeah, check out lock picking lawyer. Yeah. These videos here are absolutely amazing where he just literally busts all of these locks and testing them. The, the crazy thing about lock picking lawyer is he like this is something he is just doing. He's not he's a lawyer, uh, presumably. I guess presumably he's making a name as a lawyer, right? Could uh, be like a Dr. Cosby thing, though. No, I don't know. Could be a, it could be a Dr. <laughs> Cosby thing. Hopefully it's not a Dr. Cosby thing. I mean, I mean yeah. also, he's but, breaking it, locks and sexually assaulting women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like now we know why he's fucking spending Jesus, all that time picking those locks. <laughs> uh uh no, but this guy, this fucking guy, he not only does he presumably make an income where he doesn't need to do this, he's not doing this for fame either because he refuses to show his face. He refuses to show his face in not only his videos. He did a he did a talk at a like a convention Some and it was like a digital side. talk and there was just like a his logo. I bet he's it was like feet. fucking it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like a fucking CIA presentation. You know, it's like fucking a agents of shield talking to you. It was just he will not reveal his face in any way. So he's not doing this for fame. He That's doesn't crazy. need the money. He's just like, I pick locks and I am <laughs> passionate about it. <laughs> and I just need to see people how crazy this shit is. Yeah. It's just somebody with like a hidden talent that doesn't like fame at all. Right, right. He's... <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe he quit being a lawyer to do this full time. But even then, you know, you've, oh it's very, it's very, uh, the, very. The other people that I love are like the scam baiters. Oh, the yeah, people, those guys are good. They're so good. They'll just like turn on the CCTV camera in just the middle of like yeah. a scam call room and just tell them what they're wearing. And you're just like, what yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Oh, but another another really good genre again of just like guys making use of what they have. Uh, the like all the like extreme like drill presses, like hydraulic presses. The guys that have YouTube videos where they're just like, I have a large hydraulic press. Let me put something in it and crush it. <laughs> and then, then, like, it's fuck? just them crushing different shit. They're just like, <laughs> I got a hydraulic press here in the shop. I've got a decent, I'll buy a decent camera, put a slow motion camera in front of it, and then boom, let's crush a 200 pound gummy bear. <laughs> like, I feel like if my dad knew how to work a camera, he would be doing that shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you know, it's it's great. It's, it's get great. To that point. It's great that you know it's it's really it's uh it's real socialist when you think about it. We're really <laughs> we're really taking control of the means of entertainment, Just giving each other money and putting it in the hands of the people. You know, oh what? Only Sony can make movies. Well, I'm gonna spend the next two hours watching some guys in Des Moines, Iowa, crush some shit in the press. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, I was talking about that with uh, Dave Mirage too. About like he he was saying every time he comes home and he, he his nieces are watching something, he asks them, you know, like what they, just to know what like the kids are watching, and they were like, oh, I'm watching this like guy fill a pool with like these like little gummy things or something <laughs> yeah, with yeah. and i was like okay like oh my and i was like whoa i it's so true i remember like growing up like the shows we watched they had like story arcs and there was like a message at the end of the show and there was you know what i mean like and now it's like yeah. what are what are kids being raised on now like what what's the media yeah no so our our office right uh there was like uh, our the one of the owners of the company his like kids class came into the office one day right you come into the office and banger ha has won a lot of awards they've won basically like every canadian csa gemini fucking uh Hell yeah uh what's the uh, fuck what Juno? the one Juno, thank you. I was like, the one we could win? <laughs> like, fuck. Uh, one that uh, we're all Juno, out there, yeah. Juno, uh, and then an Emmy, a Peabody, like Grammy nominations. Uh, and we have a silver play button from the shit we do on YouTube. <laughs> the kids could not give a fuck about anything but that play button. That play button was the only boring snore grandpa award. You do play button. <laughs> like you have a hundred thousand subscribers. Like it was Holy like that button. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That button. Damn. The only yeah. one the kids cared about. I, I think it might be good in a sense because like the smart there's always going to be the smart kids right there's always going to be the dumb yeah. kids it, it, forever till the end of time it's just how it works and everyone thinks that their kid is smart whatever but the smart kids are going to use this youtube and internet to like see the shit that they really like from an even right. earlier age and have better access to it so they're even more knowledgeable like you could have a kid who is like nine and he's super interested in politics and that's all he like takes in and then by 15 yeah. he's just so well versed in like, <laughs> you're like what the fuck? and then he's... what's that knowledge going to be by the time he's 30 you know what i mean like just the amount of info that he could just take in as a child as a child i subscribed to skateboarding magazines yeah. right when the magazine was done that was it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i subscribed to skateboarding magazines and yeah. in those fucking magazines in the in the back there was always like a a, a, a trick tutorial yeah hey you wanna you wanna do a, a very hard flip here's how you do a fucking very hard flip whatever you know 50 50 grind <laughs> whatever, here you go <laughs> i would sit there with a magazine and like be like eh? And then like looking at pictures, like a fucking picture this big of how a guy's fucking kicking his ankle. And can you imagine uh, whatever you loved as a kid? There is someone on YouTube that will give you like a multi-camera slow-mo breakdown, slow yeah, yeah. breakdown of how to fucking do it. So jet, like whatever you're so into jealous. as a kid. 
uh, everybody's like, oh, what about all this screen time they're having? And it's like, right. well, just make sure they're not doing dumb. Just like make sure yeah. they're fucking get them interested in something and then show them that the fucking YouTube magic Has YouTube world answers. can teach them how to everything about the thing they love and they will go off. Yeah, there's no more like it started with uh, you can be anything you want, but then they didn't really say like, where to get the tools to do that they were kind of like just figure it out i guess like just believe you want to be that thing and then you'll get there but now this this generation they're like find the thing that you're really interested interested in and then just subscribe to all of that just like only follow those pages and then you'll be completely well versed i had a computer in the house for a very young age my parents are printers they you know they needed a computer uh so I was using a computer since like, I can't remember when I didn't use a computer. Uh, mm. And I was so excited when I got to university, I was like, or to high school, cause there was computer classes. And I was like, there's computer classes. I want to fucking learn how to program computers. That is really sick. Let me take this computer class. And we get to the computer. I, I get to this computer class and they are teaching how to type. Yeah. <laughs> that's pissed me off so much <laughs> like i dropped that class so fast i was like i'm sorry you're teaching me how to type <laughs> <laughs> i i can barely use a pen because of how much i type are you crazy <laughs> icq it's so yeah i'm just thinking about like if there was beautiful tutorials for like oh you know oh, uh, dude, those kids uh, were uh, like the teachers just had no idea at that point. They thought typing no. was the most valuable thing that the computer was going to be used for. They had no idea, like, all of the other things that they could have been teaching us about those computers, like programming it, for example. I remember yeah. taking, like, a grade 10, like, I ended up dropping it, too, and taking a different course because, like, they were teaching us a program that I'm like, nobody uses this, like, you know, like Adobe became like the main like software for like video editing, photo editing, like all this stuff. There was another one. I think it was called like DreamWorks. (laughs) I don't even know. But there was this other brand of like sort of similar thing. They were competing. It was Adobe versus this one. And our computer class was teaching us this one side of like that, that, that nobody even knows they got like a deal because like, yeah, they got like a deal on the software yeah yeah, yeah exactly just some like, fucking guy in words. a fucking trench coat being like oh you're looking for adobe this shit's way better than adobe 50 percent off of dreamworks <laughs> yeah man oh god i, was I just like Mm-mm, this is i end. went to a computer class at and th- they tried to teach me how to type after i at home i had opened up a playstation and soldered a chip on the <laughs> board of the playstation so that i could play japanese games <laughs> and, like, yeah, like, and i did me how this to type. by scrolling through pictures oh on a god. forum with like it, yeah, fucking MS Paint yellow box or yellow arrow solder here. I can fucking teach me how to type. This is 10 cents a page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what people forget, too. It was like it cost money to send text messages. Yeah. Cost money to just open. I remember opening a web browser on a phone for like two seconds and my parents were pissed. Yeah, I, I'm, I I'm old. En- I'm old enough that I had a pager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a pager in grade nine. <laughs> in grade nine, no. Yeah, yeah. How pager many grade, grade nines nine? had a pager? <laughs> but who calling you? Uh, who- you, you, you know, your friends would send you a message, and fucking hit them back. You know? No. Yeah, man, just- pager. <sighs> <laughs> I wonder why, like, I, they, I always see, like, on TikTok, there'll be these, like, old school videos from, like, it's like, uh, oh, here's a home video from, like, a high school in the 90s, and, and the comments are always like, oh, everyone looks so grown here. <laughs> like, yeah, they all have fucking pagers, like, businessmen <laughs> on Bay Street. <laughs> yeah, man, it, was a, it, was a, it was it was like a cool pager, though. It was like a pager marketed to kids, because what it was, that at the, 
the mm-hmm. shell of the pager was like a like clear green, like a you know like uh-huh. a like an N sixty four controller oh, or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The teachers having problems like taking away pagers, like people were checking it too often. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would get you would get teachers taking away pagers, man. Yeah, same. That's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, kids, this generation, they're gonna be in trouble because of X. And it's like, no, nah, man, no, no, no. I always picture is, like a class shit's with a t- good <laughs> now. <laughs> like they have a reason to be looking at. We were just looking at pagers to fucking not look at the teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like I just need a distraction. I just picture like a classroom in the 20s, the kids like just reading the newspaper in the middle <laughs> yeah. of class. Yeah, I really, like, I really fell, I really fell in the perfect age bracket to experience the complete progression mm. of the only so the only thing I didn't personally use was like a car phone where it's like in the car and you can't yeah, take yeah. it out. My dad had one in his car. Uh so I didn't have one of those personally, but yeah, pager to like Nokia fucking snake playing snake on a Nokia, uh, you know, to, to that. I, a friend had a sidekick, You're in the, the sidekicks with the fucking, you fucking flip, flip, screen. flip that screen. That, yeah. I will say to this day, that action, that action, they, ooh, Dude, the razor flip, the flip, flip phone was the ooh, best. Had a razor. Yeah. I had a razor. I had a razor flip the thumb phone, underneath yeah. and flip it. Oh, yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah bring that's it all together. I shattered a razor uh, phone by texting while skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wiped it and just ruined the phone. Wiping out on a skateboard is the least. It's so scary. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And it, like, if you're going backwards, you're like, oh shit. And it can happen at any time, any moment. like you, any moment, no matter skill level, no matter skill level, <laughs> no matter, no matter where you are, there's yeah. that great video where uh, they're, it's like, they're, sh- it's, they're shooting a skateboarding video. These are professional skateboarders. Skateboarding is their job. And there's a, it's been clipped and shared a million times. It's a fucking guy and he's skateboarding, right? And he's got a tray of like four coffees from like a coffee shop, uh, bringing it to the homies while they're sessioning a spot. Professional skateboarder, skateboards for a living, fucking pebble. <laughs> four coffees everywhere. He like loses his mind. He is so mad. It's like he just fucking fell off like 10 stairs, ruined no. the best trick of the day. And stuff. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so he would be in his head for the rest of the day there's no way oh that he God. would be able to like that kind of shit there's some people where just one one thing like that at the start of their day or at any point in their day just ruins the remainder of the day that's all oh, like, especially because you know right you know like based on comics like if you did that as a comic like you that's fucking that's you're, years. <laughs> that's yeah, you're years the you coffee shit. Guy, You're the yeah. coffee guy for years, right? Every time yeah. you walk by with a drink, everyone's like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> for the rest of you, <laughs> you know, and, and skateboarders are, ex- you know, yeah. also just, you know, the the just same kind busters. of just ball busters, right? So yeah, you just that fucking dude's just like, oh, God. I saw him on a podcast where like they had to, they had, it's like years later and they're talking about this they shit it on the podcast, wow. right? Cause they have to, cause it's like, this is one of your greatest hits, man. <laughs> That's the worst to be like such a great skateboarder. And then your one standout thing is when you wipe like out with some coffee. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, how am I going to break to the mainstream? Am I going to be in a Nike ad one day? That's the thing is, like, nobody knows, like, how, what's, like, anybody that's in entertainment, Ugh. everyone always thinks that people in entertainment are like, oh, they have, like, a direction. They know, like, exactly what, no. Some stuff is planned, sure. Like, yeah. if, if somebody signs a deal with whatever, and then they plan to drop it there. But, like, sometimes viral fame is literally just an accident. Oh man, every, the, the, the way I have the job that I have is uh, the old producer used to do spoken word and she found the spoken word community was, I'm going to surprise everyone here. The, sh- the spoken word community is apparently not the f- most fun group of people. <laughs> no. <laughs> apparently people that do spoken word poetry are not necessarily the best most fun people to hang out with and apparently spoken word poetry nights can be a little stiff um <laughs> so she started doing stand-up and found stand-up was a little more comfortable you know uh she wasn't planning on being a stand-up comedian professionally she was like this is just you know 
this is this is a this is a hobby I really enjoy. Um, and it kind of relates to what I'm doing. And <laughs> she just saw me do stand up one day, and she was like, "Hey, do you like metal? Like, actually?" And I was like, "Yeah, I love metal." Man, like, you're like, you wanna... "No, it's just my character." I mean, it could be right. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, could yeah, be. Very question. Very very question. She just assumes. <laughs> And it was like, do you want to come on an episode of our show? We have guests on all the time. And I came on as a guest. And that, again, like I was saying earlier, the, I was the first like entertainer they had. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was like, oh, hey, you're really good on camera. It's like, yeah, I've been on camera before. <laughs> that's what I, that's the, what's that old saying too? like preparation meets success is when preparation meets opportunity. Wait, yeah. Wait. Luck is yeah. what happens when preparation meets opportunity. There you go. Really there knows. you go. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, if you just keep doing the thing that you enjoy doing and working it and just constantly moving forward and gaining new skills or whatever. And as long as you're having a good time, literally people will take notice of that. And then boom, yeah. there's a little crossover opportunity right there that spawns into like a million other things. Yeah. Right. It's weird. It's weird because I always make jokes with like people where I'm like, you know, you, you're at a you're at an open mic, um, and uh, and the thing I was out, I I host I've hosted a lot of open mics, like I said, and I, the Ossington I hosted for a long time, and it was like a good open mic. There was audience there. And but the, the, sometimes people can like lose track of what an open mic is, where it's like you're not coming to this open mic to crush. You're also not coming to the open mic to ruin it by being terrible. Uh, sure. but like this Do is supposed to be jokes. Yeah. This is supposed to be a place <laughs> where you work on stuff. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I was always like, I was, I was like, yeah, you know, uh, the the thing, the thing. I was always, I was, I was like, and the person who has the best set tonight will be on s late night with Seth Myers tomorrow. Like you know, it's like just fucking relax. Like it's not this. This is you know this is a, not a space yeah, yeah. where people are where people are are uh, are watching you but then like for me it's like at a fucking open mic i get off i get i get invited to be on this thing and, and so it's also like so all that but also i mean yeah no also maybe you know but it could happen i i don't i don't, I don't want to judge happen. anyone in this room yeah. <laughs> just because you come to the Ossington doesn't necessarily mean that you're not successful in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Ossington was, man, I'm so sad that place closed. That that open mic was so great because it was just like a real, it was a real perfect mix of like professionals and new people and up and comers all kind of mixing together. And it was, yeah. <sighs> it's sad, man, the amount of places that closed there too. Yeah. That's, I dipped. I moved to Ottawa because I was like, I don't, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, uh, the expansive city. It's ex it's an expensive city yeah. to uh, like, what am I to paying for? Especially yeah, when you can't use any of the shit that makes it expensive. Yeah. <laughs> we have some of the best nightlife in the world. Yeah, it's like Concerts. pain to stay at Disney, Sports. but everything's closed. You're like, yeah. why, why? Why am I at this resort? And fuck it, you're just in you're just, you're just in Canada's Wonderland in yeah. November. No like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> can't even get a funnel cake. No, I can't even get a funnel cake. Funnel cake, uh, take home funnel cakes only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, one question that I love asking people, I'm, and maybe you've heard this before on, uh, or you've been, I know you've done lots of interviews, so you might have heard this question before, but I love getting this answer out of people is uh, if you could give advice to 15 year old Blaine, what would you tell him? Oh, man, it's like RuPaul. It's like that moment in RuPaul. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, ultimately, it would be uh, 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 <laughs> at some point you're going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin and you're going to use it to buy drugs online. Don't <laughs> just don't buy don't the drugs. Don't ask questions. <laughs> don't buy the drugs. <laughs> just leave the drugs alone. Keep that Bitcoin for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin, don't do the drugs. It's good advice. <laughs> no, I mean it's not. Keep do do the drugs. Get them somewhere. Else. Just save the Bitcoin, man. <laughs> it's so funny. You're the second person to be like invest in Bitcoin. It's not even invest in Bitcoin. It's not like that's why I'm so. That's why I'm saying it. It's not even like oh, I, I should have invested in Bitcoin. I. You had I it? bought. I had a bunch of bit. I, yeah, I was Dude. using Bitcoin as a currency <laughs> to make cut purchases. together a montage of people with Bitcoin regret. Because you're the second person I've heard this. For, Ugh, what, this what is real regret. I had it. <laughs> How many did you have, and when did you sell it?
Uh, well, that's the thing. I didn't sell it. I used it to purchase goods. Oh, no. I bought drugs on the dark web with Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't know if I said it. Uh, I used it because it was, that was, it was very convenient. It's very convenient. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, the very clean, now. safe, reliable way to purchase your drugs. Um, oh, and uh, and now you're and just, it, <laughs> you know, you every time it crashes, though, did you go like, yes, all right? Oh God, no, because it's not like I would have been like hanging on to it. It fucking <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. fifty thousand dollars, and I'm like, let's see how high this can go. No, I'm out. Really I'm out. So, cool. Thanks. <laughs> I'm testing the liquidity. Isn't that what Elon yeah, Musk sure. said? I'm testing its go, liquidity. Go, he just go, tanks go, the whole go, market. Go. Yeah. No, but I mean, my my advice for every fifteen year old is like, it, it it you will get repeatedly told that like there's ways you can and can't make a living. Like, oh, you can't. You know, it was so weird to think back to high school and go like the amount of times like it, it, institutionally in a variety of ways you were told like you can't make a living in the arts. Why would you? You can't. Don't try and be an actor. Don't try and be a musician. Don't try and do any of this shit. Like get make sure you get a reasonable education so that you can do this specific job. Yeah, get an education. I'm not saying not get an education, but like, holy shit, if you really like something, you can absolutely make a living doing it. And I don't know why there's this like big like push that you can't. I mean, if you put like almost anything if you put enough work into it you can you can yeah get it, it. so if you're willing to put that work in scores you know. like in school yeah. they they like base your whole future off of like what you got in your math class yeah they're like well you won't qualify for this university so that means no future in whatever this field is that you want to go into cuz like school can be a good thing if you know what you want to do and you're passionate about something and you just need that education and more so i would say that like it's networking really like the people that you would go to school with are like the people that you would then work with in that industry that would then give you those opportunities but to just go to school for the sake of going it's not worth yep. it yeah, I mean it. Yeah. Just because you don't think that you could do be an actor or be a singer yeah. or be a musician or whatever it is, like it, you know, be realistic with yourself. Acknowledge if you are willing to work and put up with the bullshit and all that. But yeah, you know, there's. I I spent a long I spent a long time you know pursuing a path to you know where it wasn't that I hated what I was doing in school or anything, but it was just like. I would rather have been doing this shit <laughs> <The whole laughs> yeah, yeah. time would have been nice if I was doing this shit the whole fucking time. Uh, you know, all that stuff helps and it's not, don't go to university or don't, you know, it, it can help in whatever you're doing, but you know, if you like something, just fucking go after that thing you like more than, you know, no, 100%. I, I, my, my fit in high school, my favorite fucking television show was the daily show. I fucking love John show. Stewart. I love John Stewart so much. I thought John Stewart was fucking greatest. I saw John Stewart do <coughs> stand up at Roy Thompson hall for the comedy network fifth fucking uh, anniversary when I was like 15 or 16. Uh, love John Stewart. I never even considered trying to pursue comedy or comedic writing or anything in any way at all because i was like well that's impossible you just can't i mean 10 people get to do that why would i waste my time blah 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 because you don't like really see you don't realize that there's like there's there's comedy equivalents of like middle management there's like <laughs> there's dudes that do comedy and make like sixty thousand dollars a year and you yeah. don't know who they are but they like it and they have fun and their lives <laughs> you know yeah. shit's good shit's gravy they're happy comics. with it yeah you know yeah, what I mean? right? like there's you corporate know? comics there's tons of those people that, yeah they just do right. weekends at clubs and that's it they don't care to go any higher or lower than that it pays for everything it's like hey more power to you that's the whole point. Do the thing that yeah. you want to do. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's, I'm that's happy it. though that you Twitch stream, man. I'm happy that you, you found that and you're like yeah. melding these two loves together. That's what I want yeah. to promote and want more people to do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's the thing I, you know, also don't forget that like, yeah, you might try and do that thing for 10 years and it doesn't work, but you don't realize that like, you know, you do. Stand up didn't and, work. Yeah. Did, it's like, yeah, it does. It, it, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not, this is the only road you did stand up for 10 years. You didn't make it as a stand up, and now you fucking work for 
Google, but you you crush it in meetings. So everybody likes having you around and fucking yeah. you do you do well in the company because you're like, hey, like I'm 10 here. years of stand up is oh, like you're, you're that guy now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're that guy. This chick's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to promote um, just for people listening and watching on YouTube. Thank you. But uh, go follow Blaine at Metal Comedy on Instagram. You can check out banger films as well and the twitch metal comedy yeah. as well i will drop that uh all of the links of course in the description below is there anything else you want to promote dude no man that's uh you know that's what i do that's what i do i'd say come see me do stand-up sometime but who knows what, <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows what that's happening again just check the instagram page though you'll post there if yeah. you're doing stand-up yeah, yeah, yeah. shows as soon as yeah. shit gets back to normal we'll get yeah. there We'll come yeah. back around yeah. soon. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening on Spotify and iTunes. Leave a five-star review. That always helps. And share the episode with your friend. Um, but until next time, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. Keep it classy. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.